So as we discovered in our white eye crosses um, in the last lecture, um, sex determination in flies is quite a bit different than sex determination in humans. Okay. That in Drosophila and other invertebrates, they are actually counting or tracking the number of X chromosomes that are present in the cells. And that's how sex is determined as opposed to the Y chromosome. Okay. Um, and then in other um, species, so nematodes and grasshoppers, there isn't even a Y chromosome at all. Um, it's literally just, again, the number of, of chromosomes that having two X's is female and only one X is male. Okay. So that's the, there are, there's a section on dosage compensation that we're not going to get into too heavy, but it is pretty, pretty neat to look uh, about this uh, phenomenon. Okay. So in mammals specifically, uh, there is a region, okay, the SRY, the sex determining region on the Y chromosome, and that encodes a, a testes determining factor, the TDF, okay, which is a transcription factor that, uh, if present, starts a cascade of different um, uh, gene expression um, sort of pathways that start um, testes differentiation and um, gonad development and sort of starts the path to uh, male sex development. Okay, So that's sort of one of the very first key triggers in that development. And now generally that um, SRY uh, only shows up in the Y chromosome. Okay, And so this is where you get that XY gets is a male and XX chromosome is a female because generally the X chromosomes are not carrying a copy of the uh, SRY region. Okay, And so if that's not there, uh, sort of this, the, 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 the no change state is uh, ovary differentiation. Okay, so if you have, even if you have two copies of the X chromosome, uh, the presence of the Y chromosome with the sex determining region starts off the male um, development there, and then over here, uh, if you only have one X chromosome, again, you're still missing that uh, the sex determining region there, and you'll uh, develop ovaries instead. Okay, so same here. So it's the presence or absence, not of the X chromosome per se, but of this particular sex determining region. Um, well, doesn't that always wind up on the X, on the Y chromosome? Well, we have this interesting region called the pseudoautosomal region, or PAR for short, that occurs on both the X and Y chromosome. And recombination, actual chiasma forming, occurs during meiosis in males. So when uh, sperm formation is occurring, these are lining up and we're getting the PAR2 is going to exchange some genes, the PAR1 is going to exchange some genes, and what do you know, the sex determining region is within that PAR uh, pseudoautosomal region. Okay, And so those and they have been documented to um, find that for the SRY gene uh, occasionally switching, um, being recombined and landing up on an X chromosome. So, and we can track these sort of groups of genes over time and how they've changed and uh, split and how some of the Y, uh, the X, sorry, some of the X chromosome genes here have gotten recombined and are now on the Y chromosome as well, and then we do see recombination occurring between these. So as meiosis is occurring and these crossovers occurring, it depends where that crossover is on the X and Y chromosome, because if it's uh, kind of out on the tip here, you do get some swap between X and Y, but the sex determining region is uneffective and stays on the Y chromosome. However, if that chiasma is further along, further up the chromosomes, you can in fact have an X chromosome having some, having the sex determining region, the testes that codes for the testes determining factor winding up on the X chromosome. And that will actually express, and it is entirely possible to have uh, uh, the, this gene found on the X chromosome. Okay. So, so this is our, I guess, um, the standard here is, is you just have your uh, sex determining region on the Y chromosome, but it can absolutely get sex reversed here, where you see that you have um, somebody who is presenting and has testes develop and everything, is, uh, and they have two X chromosomes when you look genetically because of the sex determining region here, and vice versa, you can have um, a person who appears female, has ovaries and everything, but when you look chromosomally, they have actually an X and Y. Okay? So it's a bit more complicated than the just straight up um, XX female, XY male system that has been basically what's been taught to you up until this course. Okay? It's more complicated than that. All right.
Also, we have this thing called mosaicism and phenotypic variability. So not all individuals who um, have uh, chromosomes will express all of those chromosomes in all their cells, especially if you are uh, XXY. You will end up uh, over the mitotic divisions either losing one or the other, and you'll have some cells in your body that are developing off of an XY chromosome pattern and some cells that are developing off of an XX chromosome pattern. Now, whether uh, or not you have the sex determined region on the X or Y, you have some sections of the body that are literally genetically male and some that are genetically female. Uh, mosaicism happens a lot more frequently than people thought, and this is turning out to be very interesting where people and mothers and such especially have, um, uh, they're seeing that the when they check the, the ch a child's um, uh, chromosomes that it's not matching up to the mother, but then when they go and investigate the mother, she has different chromosomes in her ovaries than say somatically or in other parts of her body. And so um, that's generally how that's discovered when there's that disconnect there. Okay. So um, this happens a lot. XXY is one of the more common sex chromosome um, non-disjunctions. Uh, and then if you see the, that we have this mitotic um, division ancestors and the, as the extra chromosomes get dropped between divisions, you get this interesting pattern of mosaicism there. Okay. So you get the uh, KY, XY male karyotype and the XX female karyotype, but this is all within the same organism. Okay. Right. And then the descendants retain that karyotype. So depending on what uh, lineage of cells your sex uh, organs are made from, it will determine what your uh, gametes that you can produce eventually. Now in birds, the um, arrangement of the chromosomes and sex determination is flipped. Okay. So males are the homogametic sex that have two of the same sex chromosome, whereas females are the heterogametic sex that have the uh, one of each. And so instead of the XY system, this is the ZW slash ZZ system. Right? So monotremes are platypus and echidna uh, have actually five pairs of sex chromosomes going on. So 10 extra chromosomes there which don't seem to resemble or have very much homology at all to the, the mammalian XY system and actually does have some uh, homology to the, uh, the bird ZW system and some of these genes. Uh, there is no sex determining region, no SRY analog whatsoever, and they have their own little M AMH um, region as well. So they're, they're a little complicated. Okay. And then, so we have, um, uh, in addition to the male heterogametic XY system, the female heterogametic system, we also have where um, there's different loci on different sex um, chromosomes. They might have multiple sex chromosomes in the case of these trues here that have a XYW system. And then in other animals, especially fish, it gets even more complicated where there aren't sex chromosomes per se, but there are particular genes on different chromosomes that in different combinations form different mating types. So that's your multi-locus polygenic there with the leaf cichlids. In sword tail fish, um, it's not even uh, on a special chromosome at all. It's just um, what genes do you have Okay, just a, a particular mating type gene that has two different alleles. And if you're homozygous, then you're female. And if you're heterozygous, you're male. And even beyond that, there's there's sex determination that's not even chromosomal based at all. Our good old, um, a lot of reptiles do this, where it's environmental temperatures, uh, environmental signals, mostly temperatures, the, at which the eggs incubate that push um, the sex determination uh, pathway in a different direction. Okay. So here are some um, examples where, uh, for this particular snapping turtle, okay, uh, there's at a, at a low temperature, you have the percentage, the sex ratio of male is very low. There it gets to this about peak temperature, right, about 26 degrees Celsius, where you get a very high percentage, like 75% male in the clutch. And then as it gets warm again, you go back to a very low um, percent male in your clutch. Okay. So some species have that hump, others like this uh, box turtle have uh, basically are at a cooler temperature male and then there's a particular gap where once you get above 30 here you are almost 100% female. And it's within this range that you get the variable um, sex ratio. 
So sea turtles, uh, you can they see this pretty well where when they lay their eggs on the beach, and the lower on the beach and the more um, water is present or over top, you get a cooler temperature and more males. And if you lay your eggs higher on the beach, you get a warmer temperature and the eggs are turn out primarily female. Okay. So there's that. And so this is sort of a sex determination mechanism summary here where we've got uh, either an XY uh, XX uh, system with a male heterogametic where either the Y chromosome and the genes on it are determining the sex or whether or not the number of X's, the X chromosomes you have is your sex determination. And then in birds, uh, we have the females or the heterogametic sex there. And so these are the groups that have distinct sex chromosomes. Whereas we also have groups that have no distinct sex chromosomes, either it's alleles at different genes at like a mating type locus or whether or not sex determination is not genetic at all and is mainly based on environmental signals.